All right, we're live. And we're on in five. No, no, no. Four. It's now. Three. <laughs> two. I'm so glad every Thursday, like, there's a real snippet of what I have to live with 24-7. <laughs> like, that, I have to deal with this all week long, and you guys just get it for a little second. So. We were just talking yesterday, actually, about how I have raised her bar for humor. <laughs> Oh, we were. Yeah, remember remember this conversation. I remember how your we, conversation. We both agreed how I'm so funny that like the bar is it has to be higher, otherwise you just laugh nonstop. And so that's why you don't laugh at me as much is because the bar it just has to be higher. Because so, like I was saying, <laughs> I get to live with this all week. Yeah, get uh -huh. to get to. Yep. What are we doing today? We have a bunch of questions that people have been asking. Um, Knocking down our doors, <laughs> coming to our house, <laughs> kicking the door open and screaming the questions. I think it's time to set some boundaries if that's actually happening. <laughs> um, but people have been messaging me or commenting and, and asking us these questions. And so we kind of save them and talk about them every couple weeks so we can answer them. Because if one person's asking them, I feel like, Somebody else is curious and wants to know too. So that's what today is. We're gonna just kind of go through questions. And if you're watching live, uh, we would love to answer any questions you have about nutrition, fitness, how I deal with my stress level. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can just type it in the comments. Um, if you have a question you'd like me to ask personally, you can send me a private message and I'd be happy to have that conversation with you. So we are just, Want to add some uh, realistic perspective with all of these questions that people ask. Um, everything we we approach nutrition and fitness with is um, from the mindset of this is not your life. Like you don't want to live fit and breathe fitness and nutrition, but you just want to feel a little bit better and you've got other stuff going on. So we are not very down to earth. Yeah, realistic. Like we know you're not just dying to get into the gym. Yeah. So our our because we're not our perspective <laughs> is not for the hardcore like I'm gonna uh, jump into a bikini competition fitness perspective. Um, yeah. So this is for like the average everyday person. Okay. All right. Let's do it. So what's the first question? What's the difference between healthy and unhealthy fats? Good question. Um. <clears throat> well. I would start, it's weighted. It's so weighted. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I would start by saying that the idea of healthy and unhealthy fats is kind of a misnomer. That's why I, that's why I hesitated. Yeah. <laughs> so just, let's start there. Like there, there really isn't an unhealthy fat except for trans fats, which has been like proven. Like that's a that's a one you want to avoid. And for the most part, like it's actually illegal, I think now in a lot of restaurants and stuff to even use it. So it's for the most part, it's hard to even come by trans fats a lot of the time. Not impossible, but mm -hmm. you don't see those as much. Yeah. As far as other fats, there aren't unhealthy ones. Okay. Correct. Good. Yeah, I would okay. say so. So you... what? So what's the real question here? Like, what's the difference? Because there are different types of fats. Mm. So for the person who wants to know like what types of fats they should be eating, I feel like that's the question they're yeah. really asking is what, what does that mean for on a, like on a realistic level, practic yeah. practically speaking? So kind of, I'll explain it with how I help my clients improve the quality of their fats. Um, so if someone's looking at adding some more different types of fats into their lives, we look at the opposite of what is easy and natural to find in the Western diet, uh, and that is saturated fats. Um, you find that in processed foods, eating out, uh, a lot of animal meats have saturated fats, but those aren't necessarily bad. Those actually have things in them that um, help balance our body. So the thing with the saturated fats is they're high in omega-6s, and those can increase inflammation and do all kinds of other things but there are if you're getting too, too, much, too much and and, and, and an unbalanced yeah. amount i'm gonna get there okay so okay. we've got the omega-6s and then the other kinds of fats are the unsaturated fats and, and those have a lot of omega-3s and the really cool thing is is like the omega-6s and the omega-3s balance each other out like you don't need 
way more omega threes than omega sixes and obviously vice versa. You need a good balance of both of them so they can work together to keep your body in balance. So simply by adding foods that have um, unsaturated fats in them, you can start to naturally balance that out. And so what that means is um, switching to extra virgin olive oil, avocado oil, adding, um, I'm, I'm blanking on all the fats <laughs> right now, um, and maybe having less butter and less coconut oil and just incorporating more different kinds of nuts into your diet and, and adding in a balance of those kinds of things. Yeah. So in other words, it's not, again, that's not that saturated fats are bad. It's that we're already eating a lot of those and we're not eating as much of, of the other ones. So totally. short of just, I mean, she already gave some examples, but short of just giving you a full list of <laughs> here's the types of fats. The idea is to, is to find one or two different types of fats that are not saturated and include those in your diets. Yeah. Just start there. Yeah. I mean, just to give yourself a little bit of a better balance that, and by including those, your saturated fat level will likely come down because you're, you're going to naturally eat less of this if you're eating more of that. Yeah. One simple thing you can do start, you know, when you go grocery shopping is buy, um, a bottle of avocado oil and start using that, uh, when it makes sense instead of butter. I mean, we still eat butter <laughs> because yeah. you don't want to put avocado oil on your toast. Like that's gross. Ugh. There's, <laughs> there's some things that butter is just perfect for. Um, but there's also some great things. Like I really like avocado oil to saute vegetables in now over olive oil. Um, it just has a higher smoke point. So from a cooking standpoint, it's actually easier to use avocado oil and like it was an easier switch for me. And so just by like incorporating that into your diet and just kind of looking for ways to make some, you know, upgrades. Yeah. And I, I just want to like, I feel like we've spent too much time on this question already, but I do <laughs> want to emphasize again, it's not that one is better or worse than the other. It is about the balance. Like the answer is not to go, okay, well, avocados are good for me. So I'm just going to throw avocado on everything. Right. Because a avocados are great, super nutritious, lots of fiber, but they also have a lot of calories. So if you just start throwing that on, that could mess up certain things too. So the answer is not to go from one extreme to the other. It's finding that balance by doing just one, one simple switch at a time mm -hmm. until you kind of have that better balance. Absolutely. Okay, how often should I weigh myself? This is question two. Okay, you and go with this one. This I'm gonna give this a short answer and okay. say that um, it, it really comes down to personal preference. With our, if, if you're trying to lose weight, the more often you weigh yourself, the more information that's going to give you to know whether what you're doing is working or not. So you, so I, we have our clients weigh themselves every day if they're okay with doing that or as close to that as possible. Mm -hmm. um, not only does that give us more information so that we can go, okay, yes, this is working, but also it tends to help people who struggle with their weight because what they'll see is they'll see the ups and downs of even with weight loss, even no matter how perfectly amazing you're eating, your weight is still going to go up on some days. It's just what happens. And if you can get used to that by seeing those daily things, but then ultimately after the course of several weeks going, oh yeah, my weight went up and down, but overall I still lost weight. Yeah. That's going to help you feel better about yeah. yourself. Remembering to look at the big, the long term is really hard for a lot of people who look at it every day and we're like, well, my weight went up. I shouldn't have eaten, you know, all those chips. And like, that's really not... Like it's not that minutia of right. the data. Like you really need to look at that big long term yeah. scale. So the 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 because I wanted to keep this one short to to summarize all that. I recommend weighing yourself as often once a day, um, or at least as close to that as possible. And then outside of that, like if you're not trying to lose weight, you don't ever have to weigh yourself. Or if you are super uncomfortable with it, it you don't have to weigh yourself. But if your goal is weight loss, you're not going to know for sure whether you're losing weight unless you weigh yourself from time to time. So that's kind of why I tend to say, let's go for doing it more often. But if, yeah. if you don't want to, that's fine. We have clients who do it once a week or mm -hmm. yeah, so it works. You know, there, there are other ways. That's just my recommendation. What causes sugar cravings, Megan? Okay. So let's say that you're sleeping consistently, good quality, enough hours. You feel rested most mornings. Let's say that you eat throughout the day pretty regularly, like you're at making sure 
you have a meal, breakfast, lunch, dinner, at, at, least, at, three least, times. at least three times a day, you know, um, then that leaves um, emotions. Like, it's emotional. I, I've seen some things on Pinterest or wherever where it's like, if you're craving chocolate, it's because you're deficient in whatever vitamin. I mean, that could definitely be a part of it by not eating um, a balanced nutritional meals throughout the day. But a lot of times uh, those sugar cravings are emotional. And, and so stopping and paying attention to, okay, why do I feel this way? What's going on? Why do I want this? And then really checking in with yourself is, is gonna be eye-opening to begin to get a grip on what's going on with those sugar cravings. And when you say stopping and paying attention to it, you don't mean just randomly like, oh, I want this, like you talking about, like if you really wanna make a change with this, it's probably a good thing to track on a regular basis yeah. and see. Yeah, if, uh, I think UPS is here. Um, <laughs> so we have a dog. Um, so sugar, so if you're getting, if you're getting sugar cravings, and you want to fix that, one of the things you can do is track what the emotions are behind it. Yeah, so I, I would recommend before, during, and after, kind of checking with your emotions. Before you ha have the craving, how are you feeling? While you're having the craving, how you're feeling, and after how you're feeling. And then you can kind of look back and see like a pattern, and you might start to notice what's happening. It, it yeah. The other the other side of it though is you said let's assume these things, mm -hmm. but I would say a lot of the times cravings happen because of the rest of your diet and what you're eating. It it might be because you're not eating frequently enough. It might be because you're not eating enough at each of those meals, or it could be that the types of foods that you're eating regularly are not filling you up, and so the cravings are coming because your body literally needs more food, needs more energy, and it's a quick fix to go grab something yeah. sugary it be, and it feels good it could be the, the both of them combined too i mean it's yeah. not gonna it, nothing with nutrition is ever this or that or black and white <laughs> yeah so yeah it could definitely be a combination of those and and honestly if you feel really stuck with this this is what we do is we really look at why this is happening and analyze it from the outside and figure out how we can make progress moving forward so you don't feel stuck with it again yeah. Okay. Does cardio help you lose weight faster? Can I answer this? Sure. Let's see. No. Let's see what you got. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I wouldn't say no. I would, okay. It's not the answer that I would Oh, because I don't like cardio. Well, you hate cardio. <laughs> <laughs> the, the answer I would give would be that, okay, there's a lot of different sides to this. So A, faster than what? <laughs> like what what are you trying to lose weight faster than if 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 you mean is getting up and doing some exercise going to help me lose weight faster than sitting on the couch all day then for sure yes getting up and doing something is going to help with that does cart does it mean you want to lose weight faster and so cardio is the best exercise exercise you should do so you lose weight faster than any other type of exercise then the answer is definitely no uh Cardio is not the best choice of exercise. Typically, uh, we recommend, not typically, always, we recommend <laughs> some sort of resistance training, which is strength exercises. So lifting weights, body weight exercises, resistance bands, mm -hmm. those types of things. That's going to be more efficient for weight loss than what cardio is. Adding cardio on top of that may help somewhat to help you lose weight a little bit faster but not as much as what you would think. More often, I don't recommend cardio as a, t a form of exercise for weight loss, period. I would rather have you doing, going for more walks and doing, being more active, not exercise, than I would, rather than trying to do cardio as exercise. And there's lots of reasons for that that I won't get into here. Um, cardio is good for heart health. It's car cardiovascular, heart and yeah. lungs, it is good for that, and it should be, if you want to be a healthy person, having some form of cardio in your workouts is a great way to be healthy. But as far as weight loss, I don't recommend cardio as like a prescription for here's a type of exercise you should do for yeah. weight loss. It can definitely be part of the program. It can definitely be something that you add to your strength training, 
um, and it will help a little bit. So it's not that it won't help at all, but it's definitely not a go-to and it's definitely not some kind of like... It's not the only way. Like, it's not the only way and it's not any type of magic like, okay, I want to lose weight. So if I do cardio, I'm going to burn much calories. That's yeah. not how it works. Yeah. Okay, good. Cool? Yeah. Okay, if I eat too much one day, should I eat less the next? Probably not. So uh, if I overeat on Monday, yeah. on Tuesday, should I undereat? Mm. This is one of those, it depends. But I'm just going to go with probably not. Um, probably don't, because the mindset there, I think, with a lot of women is like, oh, I overdid it. Even men. Uh, Monday, uh, now I have to eat less Tuesday. I have to punish myself or I can't enjoy, you know, oh, I'm going to skip dinner and breakfast and and then I'll, and then I'll be okay. I'm <clears throat> what, what happens then is you get into this pattern of good and bad and it's really hard to break out of that. Um, what we really encourage is if you overeat one day, just start over the next day, just shake it off, <laughs> wipe it clean and then work on, okay, why did that happen yesterday? What can I do now so that I can set myself better up for success? Um, that way you break that perpetual cycle of good and bad and and you can just eat like a normal person yeah i would agree with that and say that yeah for most people especially the people that we work with who are not like trying to get into bodybuilding condition like you're not trying to get super ripped for the stage like that that yeah i i would avoid trying to make up for it in one way or the other the, the caveat to that that I would say that we have used for some of our clients is intentionally setting up days where you do eat a little bit more. Yeah. And then maybe that also means that you're eating a little bit less some of the other days, but it's an intentional effort. Oh yeah, it's, that's it's, the big difference is we plan it out. Yeah, it's not, okay, I messed up, now I'm going to punish myself. It's, I know that I want to eat a little bit more on these days, so on these other days I'm going to eat just slightly less. Yeah. And it's part of a plan, part of an intentional overall big picture um this is how you want to eat and and so that can be effective but that would be the only time i would recommend doing that like otherwise i agree with you that just pick up where you're left off and learn from that mistake and move on yeah yes <laughs> there's probably so much more we could say about I know. that i feel like each one of these is their own topic so if you have more questions on any of the things we've touched on, um, feel free to reach out. We could talk more about it. Yeah. What's the next one? How much water should I drink? Well, <laughs> I want to say it depends, but I know that not, that's not helpful. Um, if... Do you ever tell any of our clients, aim for X number of ounces of water? No. I'll be honest. None of our clients um, really have this issue right now. So the, the, the truth is, is we got a lot of, we focus on eating a lot of, a lot more vegetables and fruit and you get water from the foods we eat. And so making sure you have a couple glasses throughout the day is generally good enough with that kind of diet. Now, if you're drinking soda all the time or coffee all day long, then, then we look at, okay, where can we add some water, like straight up water in there? Um, but as a replacement, as a replacement, just to add some more, but like drinking a gallon of water a day is unless you're working outside or working out a lot is probably more than what most people need, especially if you don't like doing it and it makes you feel miserable or you have to go to the bathroom like all day long. It's not not some goal that makes sense for you. Yeah. If you are not drinking water ever, then yeah, it's something you should look at and work yeah. on. If you drink water semi-regularly, then you are probably fine. And I think the bigger point here is when people are looking for like, okay, how many glasses of water should I have per day? My advice is always rather than looking at the number of ounces or glasses necessarily is more look at how often are you drinking going to water as a drink as opposed to going to something else 
because if a bigger percentage of that is something else, you're drinking soda, like what you said, then, then yeah, work on yeah. water. But I think what, I'll, and this, you already said this too, and then, so I won't harp on it, but you get water from food. And so when people go and Google online, like how many ounces of water do, do I need? A lot of times that doesn't account for what you're eating. What you're eating. Yeah. So and just because you need X amount of ounces, supposedly, which is again, all probably going to be an arbitrary number anyway, some of that's going to come from your food. So it doesn't mean you need to chug water. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Unless you enjoy it, then go for it. I, do, I love water. I do too. I'm weird that way. Like I actually like water. And so I tend to drink mm -hmm. only water, mm -hmm. but not everybody's like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, do we answer that? Do that, does that help you feel like? I don't know. I feel like it is. I think it's not like real specific figuring out what makes sense for each person, but that's something you're gonna have to look at like what you're already doing and what your goals are and what you wanna be doing. So look at where you are and where you wanna be and figure out what makes sense. Yeah. Because it's gonna vary from person to person. There is no one set. Everybody needs X amount of ounces. Mm -hmm. So, Okay. Is gluten bad? If you're celiac, <laughs> then it's real bad. Then it's real bad. Um, we do not take any stance with any food that anything is bad. If it makes you feel awful, then it's bad for you. If it does not, you don't like it, then it's not a good thing for you to be eating. <laughs> so that's that's my stance on any particular food, if it's good or bad. So is gluten bad? If you don't like it, <laughs> but who doesn't like bread? Um, <laughs> I think our diet is heavy in products that have lots of gluten in them. And so, you know, paying attention to what we're eating and lots of breads and pastas and swapping that out with foods that are more um, plant-based, like potatoes or grains that are not necessarily um, from wheat adds a different nutritional variety and helps fill us up better than a lot of things that are made with gluten. So there are better choices than just having bread or pasta all the time. Um, but having it occasionally is not bad unless it makes you feel bad. I actually just read um, some research on this and it, it, this is one of those things that there's people will argue about for ever because it's popular to argue about. Oh, yeah. But the a lot of the claims about what gluten do negatively to your body um, are actually have been more and more shown in research to not do that. And in fact, do the opposite. Like mm. some of the inflammatory effects are actually people who do eat gluten tend to be uh, have less inflammation. Yeah. Um, so a lot of what has been said about gluten is actually false. So fun. So <laughs> great when you're trying to figure all this out on your own. And again, it's not like I, I would, because I am me and not you, I would take the hard stance and say gluten is not bad. And most people are going to be fine with gluten, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that there aren't people who have sensitivities to it, but because it's been so popular to say that it's bad. There are, are a lot of people who have this mindset of thinking that if they just get off gluten, they're going to feel better. Mm -hmm. And really what they probably need to do is just eat a more balanced diet in general. Yeah. And so it's not, gluten is not the first thing that I would ever tell anybody to go for if they feel like yeah. they're not getting the results that they want with their diet. And, and typically we have people add things in versus cutting them out. Yeah. So. And that brings us to our next question. What Unless is, you want to save it for another video. Because we're already at how 20 minutes or so. It's fine, it's up to you. Let's do it. Okay. Because the now they're curious. Let's do the question. Because now we've like baited them. Okay. Or do you want to wait? No, we can do it. Okay. What does your coaching look like? What does your coaching look like? <laughs> <laughs> so we coach together. Yeah. So it's it's always the two of us working with each client it's it's very i always say we coach one-on-one -on -one, and she corrects me and says it's actually two-on-one -on -one because which sounds so super weird to me so which is why i don't say it but it's the two of us working together with you 
to solve your problems on an individual level. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really basic. Um, so it really depends on what you're struggling with and what your goals are, and we look at what's really important to you, where you want to be, and then we come up with a realistic way that won't feel overwhelming or stressful, and we work step by step to make that happen. And and if you get stuck then we help figure out, okay, why are we stuck? What can we do? And how can we make you more consistent with it? And, and then we're also here to make sure you're doing what you said you were gonna do. Make sure you're following through. I would say the big yeah. things that set us apart with our coaching is that we aren't just gonna throw you into some program. We're going to customize everything for you so that you are able to do the plan. Like it's not just, here's a plan, better figure it out. It's we're going to customize it so that it's actually possible for you so that you're not taking on something that's too difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're also going to adapt that so that if in a few weeks you're like, okay, this was working, but now it's not, we're not going to go tough luck, figure it out. We're going to change it so that you're not stuck going, I'm working so hard and, and nothing's happening. We'll be able to sit there with you and say, here's why it might not be working. Here's what we can change about it. Or here's what you need to do differently because you're, you're not hitting these markers and we can look at all of that with you so that you don't ever feel stuck. Like, okay, I, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Um, and then it, which is the other aspect is we are super, super, um, hands-on with our clients. It's, there's a ton of communication and really as much communication as what you want, yeah. which I feel like is different from most programs or even coaching where mm -hmm. we do weekly check-ins with people, which is fairly typical, but we're also available if you have questions throughout the week. You can you can talk to us whenever you want to, yeah. um, and we're going to give you the answers that you need. Yeah. So I mean, we would rather have an extra conversation with you than have you feel like you're struggling through the week with what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. So to me, those are the things that really are the the differences between us and just like jumping on Noom, even Noom where they've got coaches. <laughs> I'm not saying, I'm not going to say anything about it. I'm not going to say anything bad or good about it because okay. I know people do get results from sure. it, but it's definitely not what we do. It's the co the level of coaching that we give is much more, um, much more individualized to you and more hands-on and you're going to feel like we're actually available to you to help you. Yeah. And not like there's 50 other clients that right. are all pining for the same coach. Yeah. We keep our client list low because we want to be there for everybody. True. So that's yeah. what our coaching looks like. For if you sure. have other questions, let yeah. us know. If you're interested more about what that looks like, you can message me or if you have more questions, comment on the video. All right. That's it. See ya. Bye.